It's like your own country again, which suffered for so many years so terribly from this awful civil war situation. Mr. Prime Minister. Uh, thank you. Uh, very good question. I want to thank first uh, the Foreign Minister and His Highness uh, for their warm reception. Thank you for the great hospitality. Uh, and I am again here this year as well. So uh, this shows the importance uh, that we are putting into this gathering, we from Somalia, because this reflects the current reality in terms of political debate that we want to take part of. Let me start first before I answer your question by saying in terms of an interconnected wall, Somalia may be best uh, uh, represents the uh, easiest example. We are the gateway between Africa and Middle East. We are the only nation in the world that connects the Red Sea to the Indian Ocean. Our neighbors are Somalis to the side of Ethiopia because you have seven million Somalis in Ethiopia. Djibouti, they are most of them Somalians and then you have uh, four to five million Somalis maybe uh, in Kenya. That places us in a strategic location. Uh, on top of that, uh, people see Somalia as a war-torn nation, but in terms of a potentiality uh, from uh, resources on economic uh, potentiality, on agriculture, on fisheries, on uh, geographical location in terms of strategic location, on potential oil and gas and minerals and what have you, and our people who are now living globally, uh, give us and um, put Somalia in a strategic location in that aspect. Now, in order for us to maintain the progress we've made so far, uh, we cannot do that unless we work with our neighbors, either they are in Ethiopia or in Kenya or in Djibouti, because our progress is interlinked uh, with their progress. Now, how do we intend to carry that forward? Uh, let's take, for example, the tradition relationship we've had with Ethiopia and the relationship we now have with Ethiopia. Our thinking is as follows. There are seven million Somalis, originally Somalis, who live in Ethiopia, who are Somali Ethiopians. And if we don't have good relationship with Ethiopia, it actually in reality means not having good relationship with Somalis. Second, they represent uh, the biggest market we have as a potential business partner in the future, being 100 million uh, people. Uh, three, the only way we can have border security is if we have a, a strong relationship uh, with, with Ethiopia. Look at the case of Kenya. Our business is 100% interlinked with Kenya. Our economic growth, economic development, and sustainability in terms of security. Now, investing in Somalia means in reality investing in the region. Bringing about stability in Somalia means bringing about stability in the region. How do we prevent crises like the ones that we have had in Somalia for the past 20 or 30 years? It again comes back to the reality of how do we invest uh, as uh, global leaders. Uh, Somalia today stands in a position where we've made progress on political formation, on economic growth, on security. But the issue is that the world has been focusing on terrorism and how to fight terrorism in nations like Somalia. You cannot defeat terrorism through military means alone. You defeat them through investing in political processes, through creating jobs, through fighting corruption, through inclusive politics where women, youth, vulnerable groups are empowered, through putting system where people's hope and aspirations are seen through systems that they can recognize. How does, therefore, the world we live in today reflect the current realities? And why are we seeing new alliances made that are, are, coming, are, 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 are being made? The first, I think, question we need to look into how can we address the growing unilateralism and protectionism policies that are being formed globally? How do we address the question of 
competition that is becoming what is replacing cooperation. How do we again find a solution to the real reality of that is today's multilateral institutions, either being the UN Security Council, do they reflect the current wall structure? Are they able to cater for the challenges we're facing? These are questions that we would need to answer. And how do we relate to organizations like the African Union that are becoming increasingly important and how do we put emphasis into that? Finally, the biggest challenge that we see now from our end is that how do we change all narrative? People have this view, for example, of Somalia, of being a nation of piracy and terrorism, with leaders who are not able to lead their people. Things have changed, and our number one priority, therefore, is how do we make the world understand they shouldn't see Somalia for what it has been or what it is, but what it can be in the future so that we can contribute to the world. Thank you very much. Great. Wonderful. Thank you. Uh, thank you. As I've said earlier, new, new alliances uh, are happening as a result of either conflict or um, seeking economic influence or engaging in competition. Um, that said, therefore, uh, it is very apparent now that any conflict that takes one part of the world has direct impact on other parts of the world. Uh, the issue of the GCC is impacting us politically, economically, uh, security-wise, uh, which in reality means that the world cannot stand idle and watch uh, conflicts unfold, as it will have an impact the issue of the IMF's uh, forecast on, on economic um, slowdown, it is very important, therefore, we think of preventive strategy, which hasn't been the case. In the case of the European Union, I think there's a major role for the European Union, which they can play, and I hope now with, with uh, you taking the leadership, you, you will take that as an advantage. And in the case of Somalia, I would like to admit that the European Union is actually investing in Somalia and they are taking a leadership role and we see that as an example of where the European Union as an institution is functioning. Finally, the world is as good as its leaders and if we are not able to agree on global warming or preventive strategy on poverty, then I think it is time that we uh, not solve a crisis, but come together as early stage so that we can debate all these issues. Thank you very much.